metal sheets. It's described as being essentially a canopy over planet Earth. Just days ago, two colleagues of mine simultaneously from different parts of the country emailed to me a scientific article which showed that some Korean scientists in the laboratory had generated a DC current electromagnetic field and they had water vapor in that field and to their absolute surprise that water vapor crystallized with the hydrogen atoms forming a crystalline lattice of its own accord inside those lines of electromagnetic energy. Now we were not there to monitor what God was doing originally but I thank God for the veracity of his word that in that original creation, he created that canopy. What effect would that have? The biblical record shows and other ancient literature describe how man could live to be extremely old in the world before the flood. Methuselah lived to be 969 years of age. Adam lived to be 930 years of age. Eve lived to be almost that old. So it was not unheard of to be almost a thousand years in age in that antediluvian pre-flood world. How was that possible? Well, first of all, their genetic information was closer to creation. It had not been spoiled with the timeline. How is it spoiled with the timeline? Watch closely. That canopy being a very thin crystalline structure of water with the hydrogens bonded in a crystalline lattice, that canopy would filter out the extreme shortwave ultraviolet C. That's the shortwave energy that generates cancer on the skin. That's the shortwave energy that strikes an oxygen molecule. Watch closely strikes an oxygen molecule, strips it of an electron. Now, oxygen is very affectionate, so it's looking for some electron to take the place of the one stripped out. So it searches for an electron that already is in the orbit of another chemical element, so it bonds them together in what we call free radicals. It's searching for a free electron to bind to, but it forms a radical. Now these radicals are carcinogens. We breathe the oxygen, but most of the oxygen is bound up with bizarre chemical arrangements. So we're breathing carcinogens. In fact, there was a publication from UCLA just a couple of years ago by a biochemist stating that every cell of our body today is assaulted at least 10,000 times by free radicals. Every cell of our bodies, because the oxygen is necessary to sustain those cells and we're breathing contaminated, radicalized oxygen. Well, in the world before the flood, that ultraviolet C would not penetrate the canopy, therefore we would not have the radicalization of the oxygen molecules. This affects not only the oxygen that we breathe, it affects the plants that are generated. I'm thankful to God for those plants. Taking the sunlight and photosynthesis and generating the sugars and nutrients that we need for life. Without the plants, life would not be possible. So I'm thankful for that pre-flood world and the plants that it provided. And in those days, they were free of contaminants. But that's not all. We know that the diameter of the Earth has expanded. So let's contract the diameter of the Earth, placing it back approximately like it was prior to the flood. When we do that, when we diminish the size of the globe some 10 to 12 percent, we actually, in effect, double the atmospheric pressure. That's critically important. You see, there were dinosaurs in the world before the flood. Dinosaurs are some of my favorite creatures. Those dinosaurs had very small lung capacities. With today's atmospheric pressure, 
there is no way those dinosaurs could get enough oxygen to feed the deep cell tissues of their bodies. But it was found at Texas A&M University that if you double the atmospheric pressure, the entire blood plasma becomes saturated with oxygen and you triple the assimilation of available oxygen even to the deep cell tissue. So that pre-flood world permitted the dinosaurs to proliferate. I'm very thankful, by the way, for the dinosaurs. Now, while at Texas A&M University, they found, in fact, I personally witnessed, my wife was under two atmospheres of pressure, breathing enriched oxygen, and an open wound on her foot healed in 45 minutes. So we have a wonderful world in which the dinosaurs could live. I'm thankful for the dinosaurs. You see, they were the Johnny Appleseeds of that pre-flood world. One of my favorites is Stegosaurus, envisioned here. Stegosaurus had no molars. He gulped down his food, the ripening vegetation and fruit, but he could not masticate it to any great degree, and he couldn't grind it up, so he couldn't grind up the seeds. He just gulped them down, and in the great vat of his stomach, they fermented. The additional thermal energy was radiated through these tremendous plates. The seeds were still intact. And in this fermentation, when he redeposited the fermented material, the seeds were intact, and actually the plotting soil was in place. No wonder we have an incredible world where luxuriant vegetation could grow in every single dimension. And that's what we find in the fossil record. Plants grew luxuriantly. And watch this again. I'm thankful for the dinosaurs, and I'm thankful for this world before the flood, and the orchestration behind that world. Watch this very closely. We know that a crystal that has an electromagnetic field actually forms an enhancement so that signals are picked up like a crystal radio receiver. God said to Job, Job, were you there when the morning stars sang together? Now you see, we've detected Dr. Ferrella Terenzi, a PhD astrophysicist from Italy, used our New Mexico plasmic receivers, picked up signals from outer space, and those signals, I have a record of those signals, those signals sound like an unending melody. Watch closely. In order for a radio, crystal radio receiver to pick up signals, the energy has to be right, the angle of the antenna has to be just right. So each morning, for approximately an hour, let's say, in the rotation of the globe, each morning, the radio signals were picked up in each time zone for approximately an hour. After that, the angle was not right. You wouldn't be hearing these signals 24 hours, but you would be hearing them just for the right increment. Now, we know that radio signals can bring a body into resonance. We know that the Earth vibrates at a frequency. When that frequency reaches approximately 8 to 10 hertz, which would have been true part of the time, the human body comes into resonance. That would be for a relatively brief period of time, and it would receive the healing benefit of those signals. What a wonderful world in which to live. I'm thankful for the pre-flood world, for it got us through history up until the time of the flood. Then, I'm thankful for the marvelous interplay, the incredible orchestration of all God's creation. Astrophysicists have found, and physicists have found, that it's all interconnected. You see, the cycle of the moon, helps to give us time sequence. 
but it also helps to cleanse the oceans. Were it not for the tides brought about by the activity of the moon, were it not for those tides, the oceans would become stagnant. We need that reservoir. In addition to that, all living systems have an integrated interplay with everything else.